Dhruv Rathi is an Indian YouTuber with nearly 20 million subscribers on his main channel. Let's make a Dhruv Rathi style edit in CapCut, but maybe make it a little more fun. He, he seems kind of serious. First, we need some news clips about a serious political issue and a young, good looking dude doing the commentary on a green screen. Uh, oh, look, Here, here's some uh, news clips and look how good looking this dude is. Go ahead and download all of these elements right now using the link in the description below so you can follow along. You'll notice that all of these are in order, one through eight, and we're gonna do what Dhruv does and start with an important political news clip. Right here, we're just gonna drag to the timeline. Next, we'll do a little four panel magic like Dhruv did in his open, and you'll notice that I have these panels all layered, one through four. Let's start with layer four, drag it to the bottom, then layer three, boom, layer two, and layer one. And notice that they are snapping into place because this icon, the snapping icon is on. Now this is fine, except in Dhruv's video, there's a black space before these four panels start popping on. So we wanna move them over. If I click and drag them over like this, look what happens. It either pops up to that layer or it snaps over. It's like, I don't wanna snap over. I want, a, I want a little black space there. How do I get that? You just click on this track magnet icon right here or type the letter P, bam. Now when I drag this over a frame, it leaves a black space right here. And you may notice that we can only see one layer. We can't see all four of them. So to see all four of them, we want to scale them down. And you might think that the appropriate scale to get four panels on a screen would be 25%. I mean, it makes sense, but it's actually 50%. Now I could just click on one at a time and go to scale and type in 50, and that would be fine, except we can do it faster. Let's highlight all of them. And under video basic scale, we'll just type, 50 and bam, now they're all scaled to 50% and we can easily move them into place by selecting them one at a time. And here's one, two, and Dhruv had this one be three right over there and four, drag it there and they're snapping into place really nicely. And bam, we've got this dude talking and then a black space and then more of this dude doing silly things that he does all the time. This is fine, except they're all popping on at once. We want to stagger them a little bit. So to stagger them, I'm going to just move over about 10 frames for each one, position my plate at the very beginning, type shift right arrow, and that takes us forward 10 frames. Move this guy over, boop. So it's 10 frames later, hit shift right arrow again. There's 10 more frames. Learning the keystrokes is really important. This makes you much, much faster. If you had to go, what is that? type 10 every time or look at the time code and figure out it's really cumbersome. Just learn the keystrokes, you'll go faster. Shift, right arrow, and bam. Now I could drag that over or I could cut all of this. What's the keystroke to add and edit right here and delete all of this? Remember, I've said it a thousand times in all my videos, you should watch all of them. I'm just giving you a chance to think, it's Q. Bam, as the edit and we're ready to rock. Now let's look at this, one, two, three, four, they're popping on, that's, that's nice but Dhruv has them animate on and you could animate them on with keyframes, but CapCut makes it much easier and we can make it more fun than, than what Dhruv did in his. His was just kind of basic stuff, but to make it more fun, we click on this first layer and we go to animation here. And now with inselected, we can choose the way that this pops into or onto the screen. So we can use any of these, like literally any of these will work. But let's try, I don't know, how about this one? Drop down, so I'm just gonna click on it it adds it and it's fine, but it made it super long. Look at how long this is. It's shaking around forever. Let's just take this back to, I don't know, maybe 0.7 seconds. That's that's a little bit better. For this next thing, let's try how about swing bottom. Made it 0.5 seconds, it looks like this, boom. That looks pretty good. For layer three, let's try, I don't know, how about flip book? That's a little too short. Let's make it a little longer. Boop, 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 boop. And that's pretty, that's too long now. That's not bad. And for layer four, let's make sure we're positioned on it with a playhead. Let's try swing right, which is right there. Bam, that's pretty good, half second. To check this, we want to make sure that nothing is highlighted in the timeline, otherwise there's a white line around it. And to make this white line go away, you just click anywhere else on the timeline. And now let's play it. By the way, last night I stayed up really late doing super manly things. Whoa! Yeah, that second tree we chopped down. You may notice that there was a tractor in the background. I was sitting on that tractor. That tractor was tied to a cable. The cable wrapped around one tree. It went up really high in the tree that was coming down. When the tree started to fall, I was supposed to gun the tractor, which was gonna pull the cable and make sure the tree didn't fall on my house. You may notice that the tractor didn't move at all. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but I guess I kind of froze because I was afraid I was gonna drive into the path of the tree as it fell. 
but a branch from that tree did hit me while Leela sat there watching in terror. Oh, and why are we cutting trees down? Because the last time we didn't cut trees down, two trees <laughs> fell on my house at the same time at four o'clock in the morning. Oh, and today I woke up and learned that I deleted the first recording of this video, you know, before it was edited. So I just recorded the entire thing again. And the second time I recorded it, the screen recorder didn't record my screen the whole time. That sucks. So this is take three, making the video you're watching now. Please, I hope this hope the screen recorder doesn't fail me this time. So I, I'm, I'm so tired. If you want to support me and have mercy on my soul, you know, you could uh, buy me an energy drink. Just jump into uh, YouTube and on any of my videos, just click this thanks icon and slide this guy as far over, you know, as, as you want. I, I'd be grateful. I mean, and even two bucks, I'd, I'd be so happy. You may have noticed that for Dhruv's video, he had some white lines going across the screen here and here. How do you do that in CapCut? It's actually pretty easy. We're just gonna click on library. Well, we could type background or we just hit library and go to background. And we have this white background here. We're gonna drag this white background right here and shorten it up so it's last the correct duration. And that's nice, but it's not a line. It's just a big white box. So to make it a line, we just jump over to mask and we click on rectangle and we drag this up. We're gonna work on this vertical line first. We drag that up and we drag this this way. And it's like, oh, to make it an exact size, is there a way? Yeah, we just change size to 10, one, zero, bam. Now it's a 10 pixel line. Now I wanna make this line go up. To make it go up, I need to modify the position property. So I'm gonna position my playhead at the end of this white background by hitting the down arrow once and the left arrow once so I can be on this last frame. I'm gonna zoom into my timeline so I can see what's going on by holding down the command key on a Mac, the control key on a PC, and just scrolling with the scroll wheel on my mouse. I'm going to set a keyframe here for position and I want to modify the Y axis. I want this line to go up. This is Y up and down. This is X left and right. So I have a keyframe here and I'm gonna move my playhead to the beginning. I could drag it over here or I could hit the up arrow a few times. When I hit the up arrow, it goes to the nearest edit point backwards. One more time, one more time, one more time. I guess that's not really the definition of one more time. So I'm positioned here. I could just drag it down and it would add a keyframe, but it's a little more precise just to type in the value I want. Now, since I'm on the Y property and this is 1080 by 1920, if I type minus 1080, it'll drop that down to the very bottom. So I'm going to type in minus 1080 for the Y property and as soon as I hit enter, it's going to add a keyframe here and the line's gonna drop down. So keep an eye on the timeline. Bam, it added a keyframe and dropped it down. And now look at that line going up like magic. Now remember, it's like, what is this white thing and these blobs in the middle? It's because remember, there's this white box around it because this is highlighted. I want to click off of it. And now when I do it, it's perfect. Can you think of how to do the X axis line going from left to right without me messing with it. Pause and see if you can figure that out on your own so that you can actually get this sunk in your brain. But I'll do it for you after, after you try. Did you try? Okay, here we go. I'm gonna drag this white background here again. I'm going to trim it up by typing what letter to get rid of all of that? W, it adds an edit and deletes everything after. I'm going to turn this into a horizontal line by clicking rectangle and extending this out so it fills the entire frame left to right, but I want this to be 10 pixels. So for this size, top to bottom, I don't want this to be 540, I want it to be 10. So I just type 10 here, bam. And so now I've got a 10 pixel line, but I want it to move. So I'm gonna position my plate at the end of the timeline, add a keyframe for position, Go to the beginning. So if I wanna go backwards, 1920 pixels on the x-axis, what do you think I do? Oh, I go over to position X and I type minus 1920. And again, this is a 1920 by 1080 window. And there's no keyframe yet, but as soon as I hit the enter key, watch what happens. Bam, it added keyframe and moved that there. So let's see if it worked. Look at that, super pro. I've got a quick question for you. Are you happy with the views and subscribers you're getting on your channel right now? Have you heard that definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results? If you keep doing what you're doing, you're just gonna get the same results. My gentle suggestion to change things up and get different results would be to take my course, Edit with Trev and Master CapCut. Because in that course, you learn to edit in like two days and you already know how to do all of this stuff. And I show you the 10 things you need to do with every video that I guarantee will get you more views and more subscribers every single time. Like, just do them, you get more views and subs. And if you don't, or don't like the course for any reason, I'll just give you all your money back so you have nothing to lose. 
Check it out in the link below. Next, we need that young, good looking dude on a green screen. So let's go over back to media, local, and oh look, young, good looking dude on green screen. It's gonna drag him here, but I want him to start talking here. So I'm gonna take all this stuff, drag it up just a little bit there. Make sure I still have my space. Yep, I still got my space. I'm gonna drag me back here. And, oh, I, I don't, I don't wanna see me, but I just wanna hear me. How do I see me without hearing me? I right click on me. I choose extract audio. So the audio is down here and the video is here and I just drag me so I am no longer underneath these guys and you can hear me here and then see me here. So easy enough, right? The next issue is this green screen doesn't look like a great green screen. It's only covered part of me. How, how do you fix that? Well, I could jump over here to crop and I can get rid of all this other stuff that isn't green so that I can, you know, hopefully more easily key out the green. Key out means remove the color in the background, get rid of it, key it. And now I hit confirm. And so now I have some green I can key out. So far so good, but we need a motion background like Dhruv has. And luckily we can just jump over to library and select background. And we have a bunch of still and motion backgrounds. You can tell the motion ones because they've got some time code right there. How about this guy? I'm gonna click the download button. It should download very quickly. And I'm gonna take that cool background and drag it underneath me like this. Flying through space. And I'm going to trim it right here by typing what letter to add an edit and delete everything after it. The letter W, bam. This is fine, but I still got that green. How do I get rid of the green? Well, I click on the green screen, make sure it's highlighted. I go over to cut out, I select chroma key, and then I take this guy and I find the spot where it's going to look the best. And down here under my arm is pretty close. I think the shadow green seems to be okay. And I can adjust the strength. And the problem is no matter what I do, it's still a little bit schmutzy, but around there at nine is not too bad. And I can take this shadow and drag it up a little bit and it gets rid of it. And that's that's not too bad. That's kind of you know acceptable and doable, but we can make it a little bit better. So I'm going to uncheck chroma key and just scroll up to auto cut out. And notice that only human figures can be cut out. I just click it and bam, it cuts me out. So it did a better job cutting me out than the green screen. For a green screen to really work, you really want the background to be perfectly evenly lit. And here you can see this little darker, brighter, darker again. So CapCut doesn't do a great job on cutting out green screen unless the green screen is perfect. And this is good, but it's not perfect. So we'll just do the auto cut out thing. And this is good, except you've got this green here, but there is a way to get rid of that. This is kind of a, a hack. You just jump over here to adjustment, choose HSL, which stands for hue, saturation, and luminance. Luminance is brightness. We click on the green one. And we take the saturation and go and take it all the way down. And notice that that green went away. Bring it back up. There's green again. Take it down. That looks okay. We can make it a little better. It's kind of bright back here on my head. So if I take the brightness down, it kind of makes it you know, a tiny bit darker. So that's about as good as this is going to get with CapCut. And that's that's not bad at all. Remember, click off to get rid of that box. And now we have this. Wow, well, that, that's not bad. I I think I look just like Drew here, except he's younger, better looking, and actually has hair. You don't want to see me on screen that long. So let's jump over to media, local, and take our next clip called fall, clip number six, similar to a uh, an airplane clip that Drew had in his. So that's not bad. It'll jump to that important political clip. Then you just get me for a second. Then we need one more clip to end it. And we're, we're almost done. Let's drag that guy right there. And now it goes from this to this to this. And that's looking pretty good. But one thing Drew does in a lot of his videos is for his intros, he'll have some kind of a texture, like a TV texture to make all of these clips, which don't match at all, look a little more consistent. So we're going to jump up here into effects and type 1998, an effect that I like. And it gives us this video effect right here called 1998. We're just gonna drag it on top of everything. Make sure it lasts the entire duration of our sequence. Click, drag, snap into place, cause snapping's on. And now we have this kind of look. We can modify it a little bit if we think it's, you know, blowing it up too much. Drag that down. The texture, I kind of like it big and obnoxious like that. Leave it there. And now, before I play the final masterpiece, you know, watch this video right here where you can learn to keyframe like a pro. And now, the final masterpiece. And Joan, Shanghai, I'm going to pronounce for Shanghai. It seems that here in the United States, we can't find anyone under 150 years old to run for president. For two reasons. One, to 